and with flatworms. Um, we started with them yesterday, and remember, so far we've learned about sponges and jellyfish and corals. So these are the first animals that actually have a head. Um, the head is now appearing in this group, and before they didn't, I mean, we, sponges and jellyfish and corals didn't really have a head. So now we have a head region, and this is called a cephalopod. Cepha is for head. So they have a head region, which is something new that we haven't seen before. Um, and they also, for some of them, they're going to have eye spots. Now, eye spots don't actually let them see It's a sensory something. thing. Yes, it's a sensory thing. I watched that video. Good for you. And it allows them to see, like, light, the intensity of light, kind of the direction of light, but not actually see like we see. Um, they have a centralized nervous system, which is kind of like a brain, but not like a really good brain. And they have like a neural ganglion, which is kind of like nerves that are all tangled up together in a bundle. So they're getting there. They're definitely getting there, but they're not there yet. So it's, that's why we do zoology the way that we do, starting out basic and working our way to more advanced so we can see the progression. And we can learn the progression one way or, and see how it gets more and more and more complicated. We start with the simple sponges and we work our way to the more advanced animals. So gradually we can see how they have evolved. they look like on the inside we've got the cephalopod area the head and then we've got the two eye spots and then we have our ganglion which is the bundle of nerves most of it is digestive tract remember they don't really have a respiratory they don't really have a, um, a heart or anything like that because they don't need to all of that is just absorbed directly across the skin because their body is taking it and that's why they're flattened and they don't have a body cavity at all. So really the only thing that they are um, absorbing it, or the really oh, the only thing their body needs is a digestive tract because they are eating, um, they have a mouth because they are the first hunters. They are actually hunting and looking or actively seeking out food. So the pharynx is that one opening that we talked about. So the mouth is actually down here, and this is where they're actually eating from. And they have that gastrovascular area. The eyes are on the other side. Yeah, this is the head, and then they have those two eyes. They look kind of cross-eyed. Yeah. Kind of weird looking. Now they have some survival strategies. One of it is the two large nerve cords that kind of run down either side of the body. They're parallel to each other. And then many transverse cords that go across. It looks kind of like a ladder when you look at it. And then they do have tiny little hairs that are called cilia that help them to move. And the body is covered in slime, um, which helps them to catch their prey. So a lot of different strategies that are helping them to survive. And they use these strategies to um, different purposes. Some of them are going to have more, like more slime than others. Some of them will have quite as much slime. Some of them will have more cilia than others. But generally, these are the characteristics that they all share.
Plumber saw me in Upstream Coast. He asked me for help. is a fluke. The fluke has a head region that is more prone to like biting, kind of grasping onto something. Um, now they all are typically going to have like a flame cell. The flame cell, we'll talk about in a moment, has a particular purpose um, to help them survive as well. The flame cells have cilia that move the fluid through the flatworm. And this flame cell has some cilia on them that kind of Oh, it's similar to like what we saw in the sponge with the collar cells, and it moved the fluid through the sponge. That's kind of what we see with the flame cells. It's moving the fluid through the flatworm. Even though the flatworm doesn't have a body cavity, it still has fluid inside, and these flame cells use the cilia to kind of move the fluid throughout and help kind of circulate it. So what's cool about flatworms though is they can regenerate and they're actually really really good at regenerating and planera especially are really good at regenerating so we'll look at a picture in a little bit of a planera that has been like cut in pieces and depending on how you cut the planera it can regrow body parts really easily and because of that asexual reproduction is kind of their go-to method they break apart and they can regrow very easily. Now there's also a misconception though that worms do this. Worms do not do this. If you cut a worm in two, they don't become two worms, like earthworms kind of things. Now with earthworms, if you cut a worm in two, half of the worm will die and half of it will survive. The half of the worm that survives is the head region of the worm. The head region will survive and the tail region will die. But with flatworms, the flatworm, if you cut a flatworm in two, both sides will survive and both sides will become two new worms. So it really just depends on which group of worms you're talking about. Flatworms, yes. Earthworms, no. Um, flatworms are also called hermaphroditic. Hermaphroditic means that they have both male and female parts. This is very helpful for a group of animals. And weird how they reproduce. And very weird. It is so oh, weird. Yeah. It is. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you watch the video? I was sitting in creative writing, watching the video on my phone, typing it on my computer, and it was talking about how they reproduce and everything. I was like, that is so weird. And, and then it stupid. showed it, and I was like, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't watching it. I was just listening to it. <laughs> they showed it. I didn't want to watch it. <laughs> yes. So... Um, they are both male and female. It's and cool how they swim through water, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, like that. I yeah. loved it. It was so nice. It's helpful to be hermaphroditic because that means that they don't have to worry about finding another male or female. They just have to find another worm. That's all they have to do. It doesn't matter if the worm they find is male or female. They just have to find another worm. So that makes it easier. So find another flat worm, they're good to go. And yes, the um, the mating is definitely interesting. I'm glad you guys watched it. Good on you, my students. I was gonna watch it last night, and then my computer was dead. So then I was like, okay, I'll just charge it. And then I started watching Meg too, and I was like, yeah, this is way more interesting than that. And I mean, I Meg like, too deals with love. Exactly. Meg 2 is so stupid. Don't watch it. I did watch the Meg 1. Oh, Meg, yeah, Meg, Meg is good. The Meg 2, they bring dinosaurs into it. I didn't know they made Meg 2. Yeah. yeah. It's stupid. I like Meg 1. Meg, Meg is good. The Meg 2, they put like these dinosaurs that have like fish tails, kind of like Avatar. Yeah, they can get them on the land. Yeah, it's stupid. That sounds horrible. It is. It makes like no sense at all. It's like, 
uh, 370 meters down or whatever that, 57 oh, meters, meters down. down. Yeah, 57 meters <laughs> down. Shut up, guy. 57 meters and then, like, Avatar can buy it, kind of. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. How was the new Avatar movie? It's so good. I love, love it. it. I have seen it. I love the new Avatar movie. It's dope. Good. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not going to sleep. gave us this paper at the beginning of either at the end of last week or at the beginning of this week. And then the video literally took me like <laughs> the video took me like I'm maybe ten minutes so and that's that just that you know, that I have to take it I finished it yesterday. I didn't finish the video yesterday because well I was gonna do it in class and I was like no I just decided And then I was gonna do it at home but my computer was dead so I couldn't get in and I got distracted. But I still did it. Okay, so this is what the flame cell looks like. You can see the cilia here in the center that whips back and forth, and it makes it so that the fluid moves throughout the center of the animal. Um, the two transverse, sorry, transverse, this one's transverse, the transverse nerve cords, and then the parallel nerve cords that go down, and then the ganglion where the brain is, and then this is the digestive tract Oops, sorry, I only too fast that time. And then um, it regeneration. It regenerates really, really well. You cut the head off of a planera. This is a planera. You cut the head off, he grows a tail. You cut like this section, he grows a head and a tail. You cut this section and it knows what to grow. And see, the fascinating thing is how does it know? How does it know what to grow? It's, I mean, how does he know that he needs to grow a head here and a tail here? How come the head doesn't grow here and the tail there? How does it, how does it know? How does this body know what to grow? How come the head doesn't grow here and the tail doesn't grow there? How come, I mean, how, did, how does it know what to grow? Oh, I mean, this one, this one I understand. Like, obviously it knows it needs to grow a tail here. But if, it, if you're cutting a chunk off here, how, how does this part know it needs to grow a head? I and mean, then, if you think about it, if it gets big enough, like a grown adult, mm -hmm. and then it gets its middle half cut off, it would know where to grow, grow the head and everything because... But this chunk, like, turns into this. Yeah. And this chunk turns into this. And it's like this chunk knows that I need to grow a head here and a tail here. Like, how come this doesn't turn into a head? This, like, this doesn't go into that this one. It's like, my guess would be the cells are already... Like mm -hmm. pretty formed here. That's what I think. Yeah. So it's pretty fascinating. They're so good at regenerating. Other animals are not this good at regenerating, but the flatworm is. So here's another example of how this works. They are so good at regenerating that if you split their head down the middle, they would grow two heads. Isn't that cool? Yeah, two headed planara. Because you could split their head down the middle and you could regenerate they would regenerate and then you would have a two-headed planara. So this is like, and then you could divide their body up into three chunks, and then you could have three planara from one. So you could just like chop them up into bits and have lots of little planara from one of them. So that's how good these guys are at regenerating. These, not guys, I mean they're hermaphroditic, so they don't have males or females, they are both. Um, so that's how good they are at regenerating. All right, so this was in the video, the penis fencing thing. Um, they are a battle in which the flatworms can, um, will, they will basically jab each other and the winner um, gets to be the male. And whoever jabs it in is the male and will inject it with sperm. And um, it's, it's to the 
advantage to be the male because the female, it takes more energy to be the female. They actually have to carry the eggs and then like take care of them. And it's, it's, it's harder to do that. So um, it's better to be the male and to then just inject, inject sperm into the female. So um, they will engage in these penis fencing battles and the, the, the male is the winner that and then the female is the one that gets injected with the sperm. Yeah, interesting. And they show that in the video. They do. Mm -hmm. Animals are weird. Just wait till you get to the parasite. It's a real parasite. Oh, and if you think that's gross, you should see bot flies. Did we talk about bot flies? I feel like we talked about bot flies. I don't think we did. No, we didn't talk about bot flies. No. Bot flies are flies that lay their larvae inside of living animals, and the larvae get huge, like the size of my thumb. And the larvae will like be inside an animal, and you can see it moving around. And the like the best way to get it out is to, like squeeze them out, and they like pop out. And then they leave these holes behind. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yep. they leave these like holes behind inside of these animals. So like they'll bring in like a dog that's been infested with bot flies, and then the vet will just squeeze, and all these bot flies like pop out, and the larvae are like the size of your thumb, and they leave these holes behind. I mean, you see the holes in the animal. Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of like that one parasite that gets infects a snail and gets into its eye socket, mm -hmm. so we'll try and like mm -hmm. get it first. Yeah, only imagine it's the size of your thumb and it's inside a dog and you squeeze it and it pops out. Yeah, and it leaves a hole behind. I've seen that. Flies. That's just that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. In Florida, we learned about that in my, one of my science classes. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't give her a penguin love, it's going to die. Essay is like a page, and like you have like you press enter four times. Like the bottom, there's like this much left of the bottom. It depends. For the coral one? Yeah. I forgot that was in the thing. Because I thought you guys knew. It's a new science class. Um, it depends. Okay. It, uh, I'll, I'll have show to you see how much. And they will have that penis, of course, because that's what they use for the the um, penis fencing. <laughs> They're always looking at me like that. Well, I did just say that really loud as he walked by, so <laughs> <laughs> he's probably wondering what we're discussing. <laughs> um, but you know, it is my class, so who knows? So they um, they do use that for the penis fencing competition. It's a channel for. Um. It is the opening that absorbs as well. Yeah, and they, they can, can stick you anywhere. Stick you anywhere in the skin. Yep, and it will absorb. Yep. All right, so that's all the notes we're taking today. That's so weird. Like, they could just walk up from behind and be like, bam, pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Kyan,